Hello, vinyl community. Um, I want to talk about um, a fun little adventure that I had just this past weekend. Um, I'll start at the beginning of the story, though. Um, I've been having some correspondence with a uh, VC guy called Psych in the Valleys, and um, he showed a copy of this record that he'd recently got. Uh, he was quite happy for it because it was an original pressing, I think, and um, he said it would replace his um, copy, which is a reissue on Fame. Um, yeah, I can't remember quite how we got there, but he made the offer to uh, send me his his old copy in the post, um, which is what he did very kindly, very 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 kindly. Thank you very much. And um, well, he sent this, and he sent a few other bits and pieces too. I'll to quickly show you what he sent. He sent me a 45, the Trogs. Um, it's actually the single of Love Is All Around Me. He left a note saying that the B-side is a, is a lost psych classic, apparently. B-side is When Will The Rain Come. Um, he also sent me this, which I've seen around before. I've never really quite known how to take this record. I actually have a Nancy Sinatra album downstairs in my collection. Um, and I noticed that one or two other people have been showing this too, so uh, quite a fun little uh, thing to listen to. Um, need to read up a little bit about it, but it seems to be another sort of a long lost gem. Um, he sent me this. Um, Thank you very much. I already have a copy of this, so if it's okay with you, I'll pass it on to somebody else. Um, Psych in the Valley said that he had a few copies of this himself, so <laughs> uh, it's a popular record uh, and a very good one too. He also included uh, this record, The Lion in Winter, um, and said about how um, he'd made a video about John Barry before, who was the composer of this uh, music. Um, but it got taken down because he included a, um, a bit of a needle drop in it, I guess, that um, wasn't appreciated. But, uh, well, thank you very much. Good to have uh, another one I've got to look into. I don't know much about John Barry, so uh, yeah, go ahead and make a, a video. I'd like to see that. Um, okay, so I, I'm playing this in the background while I'm talking. It's a really good record. Really happy to have it. I'd, I'd been looking for this one for a while and I said to him actually the last time that I'd seen this was in on holiday in the Isle of Wight in an Oxfam shop um, but they're asking £20 for it and although it's probably worth it um, yeah, it was more than what I wanted to pay for at that, that point in time so I left it um, really happy to have got this one now so Psych in the Valleys and I um, corresponded through Facebook briefly um, yeah, because you can't do the private messaging through YouTube anymore goodness knows why but uh, that's the way it goes I suppose um, and he dropped me a note in case I wasn't aware of this um, about a record sale that had been um, publicized somewhere I don't know where um, that was due to happen in Barry the town where I live now and um, the records were priced at two pounds each and um, I thought oh no I don't think about that now I've lived here for three years and uh, I thought I pretty much had covered all of the record sale outlet type places <clears throat> so I was quite interested to hear about this one that he was speaking about um, apparently what this shop was it, it, it was a shop that had been open before years ago um, but it had shut up shop but uh, all of the records were in there and I think the owner had been using it basically as a record storage warehouse type thing um, so I got really excited and um, said to myself I'll get up early and <coughs> early that morning go there and uh, hopefully catch some gems while I'm there so I set my alarm clock to get up early on that uh, Saturday morning um, was quite excited to get there so yeah, 
it wasn't so hard to get up. Um, but even though I arrived in good time, already there was a big long queue of people all around the building <laughs> trying to get in there. I guess that news had spread very quickly. Um, I stood in the queue, chatted to the people in front of me and behind. There was quite a good sort of uh, sense of banter going on in the queue, so that was good fun. And although I was there for what two two hours odd, I suppose um, yeah, it went fairly quickly because it was a, quite a good atmosphere queuing up to get into this shop, and nobody really seemed to know very much mm. about it. So anyway, once I eventually got to the front of the queue, I realised. Um, by asking the, the guy that was letting people in about paying with card, and of course they didn't they didn't do that because it was wasn't really a, an official shop. It was cash on delivery only. Uh, so typically, I only had a bit of change in my pocket and a ten pound note. So I didn't manage to get that much, uh, but probably for the better. Now, because I'd been in the queue for a couple of hours. Um, and they were sort of letting in so many people every now and again. So every time somebody came out, they would let somebody else in. So I think the people that were coming out while I was in the queue, that had been in there in the first hour or so, they were coming out with some quite interesting looking things. You know, stacks of records under arm. I saw glimpses of Motorhead records. I saw um, Queen albums, picture discs of various different people. Um, I think there was even somebody with a cream record as well. So there was this kind of feeling, oh wow, there's some good stuff in there. But of course, being in that queue for two hours and people going in, coming out, <coughs> going in, coming out, it was slowly dwindling. Where the broken hearts go. Oh, I thought I used to stand there on the door and fall there was still thousands of records in there, but you know it had sort of been picked through quite a lot by the time uh, I'd got in there. Now. But I still managed to find one or two things. Um, I picked out around about 10, 15 records, um, and when I sort of worked out how much it was going to cost me, I whittled them down to just a few. Um, and I'll show you what I found. Um, so this was a pretty good find. Um, this is Bill Black's combo, Saxy Jazz. Um, quite an interesting record. Uh, Bill Black was the bass player for Elvis Presley's early sort of um, band, if you like. Um, he played on yeah the first few Elvis Presley records, and uh, this I think this was his first solo or yeah first record you know under his own name if you like. Um, it's pretty good. It's interesting because it's it's sort of labelled as 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 um, jazz, but uh, I'd say it's probably closer to. To rock and roll, really. Um, I'll play a little track. Uh, some, interestingly, some of this stuff sounds almost like a precursor to status quo. You'll, you'll hear what I mean when I when I do the needle drop. So what do you think? <laughs>
another record that I got there was this one. This is a Kimps compilation. Uh, it's only on Marble Arch, so you know it's uh, not an original or anything like that. But it's very Kimps old. Compilations, you know, there's a lot of those around. It's a bit like uh, Beach Boys compilations. Um, but this was quite an early one, yeah, released in '66, so it focuses on the first few records. So there's a lot of early tracks on there. Um, I don't have that many Kinks albums, so uh, yeah, I grab them when I see them. Um, Scylla Sings a Rainbow. So this is an early album, I think it was about a second one, uh, second or third. Um, lovely record. Again, released in 1966. This is an original um, stereo, produced by George Martin. Um, there's something really satisfying, you know, when you you buy a record like this for for two pound and you get it home and clean it up and it's just, you know, beautiful. And it was almost like it never been played. Once you clean off all the, the grime and the dust, because this place was really was quite you know dusty and grimy. There was a lot of <coughs> what I call charity shop fodder there, um, but there were one or two things that were yeah of interest. But of course, the the longer the shop was open, I guess those things got fewer and fewer, and you know, there was no way that any one person could look through everything because there was just so much. Um, this was excellent one to have found. Steve Hackett's first solo album. Um, I understand he did this um, while still in um, Genesis. I could be wrong, but I think that's right. Um, it's, I've got this on CD, so I was really happy to find this lovely gatefold. Again, beautiful condition. Two pound for that. So, yeah, not too bad at all. So another record I got is this. This is Green Slade. Um, Spyglass Guest. Um, gatefold. Shaft of bits. I found this. Um, yeah, it's not. In, it's, it's not in spectacular condition. But uh, hey, for two pound, um, I'm quite happy to pay that. Uh, and it's a record I didn't have. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm not too sure what I think about the cover. It's a very dark cover, isn't it? It's got this cat down here, the puma or something like that, in the darkness. Don't know the relevance of all this. I mean, there are other albums are, you know. Originally designed by Roger Dean and things, actually quite sort of attractive illustrative things. But this is an odd cover, which I don't rate very highly. But the album itself is very good. I, I really like Green Slade. I think they're a good um, progressive rock band that uh, don't get enough attention these days. <laughs> So that was five that I picked out. I had six in my hand that I took to the sort of to the till, if you like. And the man uh, said, "Okay, twelve pounds." And 
I had a ten pound in my note, and I was rummaging through my pockets to find the change. And you could see that <laughs> there's a queue of people behind me. He's going to, you know, want me to hurry up. So he said, uh, oh, "I would just call it a tenner then." So I said, Are "You sure?" He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just gave him a ten there and shook his hand and walked out. But the the sixth record that I had. Um, was was this one, and I was umming and ahhing about it because it's a bit water damaged, and uh, well, there you go. It's, it's an old record on Starline. Um, it's the Yardbirds, um, a compilation of uh, some of their music. I think from the first three albums or so. Um, it doesn't include any of the tracks that Jimmy Page played on, but um, mainly music that's included Jeff Beck and uh, Eric Clapton. Yeah, the, the cover's a bit beat up. But the record in itself is, is absolutely fine. The star line, that shine. It's fine. The ones that I put back, uh, they included one or two 12 inches. Um, they're only asking a pound for the 12 inches, but I didn't see anything that you know, I desperately thought I'd want to have. Um, I put records back by um, Talking Heads, I think, yeah, if I remember rightly, there was a, a couple of compilations of various artists and things that uh, were slightly interesting, but not so, not, not more than the ones that I chose to keep. Um, and they were talking about <clears throat> uh, before they, you know, before I left. They were talk, there was talk about uh, having uh, another similar kind of session like this um, closer to Christmas time because apparently um, they had a lot more stock that um, simply just wasn't available. They hadn't had chance to sort out and go through and, and uh, you know prepare ready for sale. So uh, I'll keep my ear to the ground and uh, definitely go along to the next one. And I'll remember to take some more cash when I go. Okay, um, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Psych in the Valleys, um, for the tip-off and for the VCLT. Um, you forgot to send me your address. Uh, do that, and I, I would like to return the favour and send you something in the post. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Check out my next video. Bye.